All right, thanks for uh, coming out. Excited to uh, be playing for the Mayor's Cup trophy uh, this week. I'm looking forward to the, making the trip out to uh, Missouri. Before I get started, I just wanted to uh, wish our uh, wish luck to Coach Staley and her number one ranked women's basketball team as they tip it off this afternoon and start the 2021-22 uh, season. And best of luck to Coach Frank Martin and his team as well. Uh, excited to get out when, when things slow down football-wise, which hopefully won't be anytime soon, and have a chance to get out there and, and watch them play. But certainly uh, thankful for their support of our program and, and uh, my friendship with both of them and how good they've been to me since I became the head coach here at Carolina. So uh, really looking forward to watching them play and wish them luck uh, as, they, as they tip off uh, their season. Uh, this this afternoon and and tonight as well. Uh, injury wise, nothing new to report from the uh, teleconference uh, since Sunday. A lot of those guys that were had some bumps and bruises uh, after the Florida game on Sunday. Uh, the day off on Monday did wonders for a lot of those guys and and uh, were were uh, in in a good position health wise. So nothing new. To report there, uh, congratulations again to uh, Parker White for being the SEC Co-Special Teams Player of the Week, his third time in his career, which is quite an honor. And and uh, I said it the other night, and I'll say it again, it's ridiculous that he is not uh, on that Lou Groza award list. And I would hope the people that vote for that Lou Groza, for the Lou Groza award would uh, – certainly reconsider because they absolutely made a mistake in not having him on that list when you look at what he's done in his career here at Carolina, the game-winning kicks he's had, the number of times he's been the uh, recognized by the Southeastern Conference, uh, the fact that he's the second highest or second most, second all-time leading scorer, I believe it is here at Carolina. I mean, I don't know what else the guy's got to do or what else a kicker has to do. So I know there's some talented guys on that list, but I, would, uh, I wouldn't take any of them above our guy. So thankful he's our kicker. And uh, we don't need outside uh, awards to validate him. We know what we got, and our fan base knows what we have in Parker White, and I'm thankful for him. I uh, got a big challenge out in Missouri this week. Uh, they've, uh, they've certainly been beat up and had some injuries as the year has gone on, uh, like we have as well. Uh, defensively, they're playing better. I know the narrative was early in the season. They couldn't stop the run and, and whatnot. And when you turn on the tape, you, you don't see that. All you have to do is watch the first half of the Georgia game, and Georgia couldn't run the football against them on Saturday. And the reason Georgia was winning like they were at halftime was because they blocked a punt for a touchdown and because uh, the Georgia quarterbacks and receivers and tight ends made, him, made some uh, phenomenal one-on-one -on -one, uh, plays. So they, uh, they've, they are loading the box. They're doing a great job of stopping the run. Evident that was very evident in the first half of the Georgia game, and uh, you know they're playing a, lot, a little bit more man coverage and making your receivers and tight ends and running backs make plays. So that'll be a big challenge for our guys this week, uh, going up against their defense. They got a, obviously an All SEC performer at a defensive end and Jeff Coat, and, and um, uh, it's an impressive group as you uh, as you watch them they're really good on special teams they've uh, if you look at just the, some of the metrics across the country uh, from a special team standpoint they're right up there near the top of it as well they do a nice job you can see they're very well coached on that unit uh, they've returned a kickoff for a touchdown against Tennessee earlier this season had a long return the other day against uh, Georgia as well so we've got to make sure that we continue to play well in that phase and and uh, and 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 dominate that phase of the game and then offensively certainly uh explosive uh the running back Beatty is a weapon uh a 1000 yard rusher averaging over 100 yards a game he's their leading receiver uh, i mean what a what a player he is i mean there's so many plays on tape that uh you're watching it i watch uh, uh, uh the explosive play cut up each week so basically every run over 12 yards or every pass over 18 uh, that they've had all season, and it took a while to go through that tape last night. As many explosive plays as they have on there, and there's so many with the run with Beatty, the running back, where uh, he's hemmed up and tackled, 
And I'm saying to myself, why is this on the explosive play tape? It's a three play, it's a three yard gain. And then you've got three guys in position to make the tackle or three guys that have him wrapped up. And next thing you know, he wiggles out of it and it's on a 70 yard run. Uh, so major, major concern for us, obviously slowing down uh, him and the rest of their offense. They've got a big physical offensive line and receivers with size. So they've got a good football team and they've been beat up from an injury standpoint, but we know we'll get their best shot uh, this Saturday out in Missouri. Um, you know, it's critical for us. Obviously, great night the other night against Florida, but that's over. It's behind us. And uh, what are we going to do about it? And, and we need to continue to progress as a football team and, and get a lot better because we did some really good things on Saturday night against Florida, but by no means have we arrived. There's a lot that we could have done better on Saturday night as well. We did not play well in a lot of areas and, and a lot of things that we can just be better from a technique and fundamental standpoint. So uh, it's a challenge this week to make sure that we're not – uh, comfortable uh, by any stretch of the imaginations. We got to continue climbing and continue, uh, continue getting better. So with that, be glad to take any questions you guys have. I don't know who's going to answer the fir- ask the first one with David Kloniger and I here. It's like surreal. Uh, somebody other than David's going to ask the first question. So who gets the honor, Steve? Man, big honor, my man. Congrats. Shade, I guess I'll just start it off with the quarterbacks. I think we saw Jason's going to be the number one guy on the depth chart. Is that the case that he's going to be the starter on Saturday? Yes, Jason will start at quarterback. Uh, uh, he obviously played well uh, the other night and, and had some momentum because of it offensively. And need to keep that going. Zeb's healthier and and is is available. Zeb practiced today, did more today in practice than he did at any point last week. So he's good to go. Um, uh, Jason's the starter and. And we've got a capable group of guys back there that we can put in there and, and play quarterback, whether it be him or Colton or Jason, Jason Colton, Zeb, uh, uh, to carry on, whoever it may be. Omega Blake, who knows. And then just real quickly, uh, I saw Jalen Brooks wasn't on the depth chart anymore. What's his status? Yes, yeah, same, same as before. I just, you know, I, I spent, I'll be honest with you, I spent about 30 more seconds looking at that depth chart on Sunday night than I normally did, which means I spent about 52 seconds analyzing that depth chart before it was released to you guys. So I knew that Jalen was on there and um, he, you know, he won't be with us in Missouri this week. And, and again, hope no timetable, but very hopeful that he'll be back on this team soon. I love the kid, love what he's about. And uh, uh, I just didn't want to have him on there anymore if he wasn't going to be in uniform. Purposefully asked the second question to honor David a little bit. Um, <laughs> obviously, with the offense, how much of what you saw on Saturday is replicable going into this Missouri game, and what's maybe next for it in terms of maybe finishing drives or executing a little bit better? Yeah, I would hope that all of it is. And, and you know, we, we ran some different schemes the other night that were specific to Florida, but it wasn't like all of a sudden we just came out with a new offense. I mean, we ran a lot of the same plays over and over again Saturday night against Florida. Uh, they were uh, multiple times. Uh, you saw, I talked about the play with Trey Jones. I mean, I think we ran that on both fourth downs and ran it, I think, three plays in a row down there on the last drive. Uh, so we, there are schemes that are specific to the opponent, but we've got to continue to, one, be efficient and uh, playing with great physicality and competitive spirit uh, like we did the other night. And, and that's one thing we got to keep going on and that should that I hope We'll carry over, you know, big challenge this week with these guys for sure. And then uh, that finishing drives, you know, Parker was the SEC special teams player of the week because we kicked four field goals. And as much as I love those field goals, you'd love to have four touchdowns there and let him come out there and kick the extra points. So we've got to finish drives and, and that's a big challenge for us. We weren't great on third down the other night against Florida. Now, part of that was because we had some third downs that we ran it because we were going to do, we knew we were going to go for, go for it on fourth down or, you know, there at the end of the game in a normal situation on that third down on the last drive. I mean, the game was over. We were just going to run the ball, but we ran it on third down and instead of throwing it and, and didn't get it. So that stat gets a little skewed, but primarily let's be better on third downs. Let's try and score touchdowns in the red zone. Uh, and then let's build on the things that we did well. One penalty, no turnovers, and then running the ball efficiently. And and um, and, and we'll have to make some plays in the passing game this week uh, to win the football game. There's no doubt about it. Shane, did you like the attitude the guys came in with? Uh, you talked about how Florida's over and we got to move forward. Did you like their attitude these couple of days that they came in with they weren't too high about Florida? Yeah, absolutely, and, and uh, 
it's a uh, it, it, and that is a challenge for us. There's no doubt about it. I mean, it's the first time that um, that we're uh, we've had some great wins, but a win like that, you know, it's certainly a little bit different for our guys, and we got to handle it the right way. And you know, we talked about it on Sunday that the same people that are you know, telling you how great you are and all that stuff are probably the same people that wanted you benched last week. You know, the same people that were that are telling uh, myself or Marcus Satterfield how awesome it was and we've been behind you since the get-go were probably the same ones that were on the message boards last week ready to run us out of town. So, I mean, it, it is what it is. So, we, uh, we've made a big point about not listening to the outside talk when we were struggling and let's not listen to the outside talk now either. And uh, it's a challenge for us to take what we did on Saturday night and, and build on it and be even better because of it. And um, so far I've been impressed. I mean, we came in on Sunday and, and that was a physical game on Saturday night. Our guys were beat up. We, we had our normal team meeting where we showed the good from the night before. We showed the bad from the night before and then went out on Sunday night and, and had a good practice. And today was very, uh, started with the team meeting this morning. I thought it was very energized and very spirited, and practice was uh, the same out there on the practice field today. We did even more good on good work than what we did last week and some more competitive stuff, uh, some things that we hadn't done since preseason camp that we did out there this morning. And, but guys, uh, guys' effort was fantastic, and, and now we've just got to keep building us a long ways until Saturday. But, yeah, to answer, to answer your question, I've been, uh, I've been pleased so far and something I'm – Really, really, really trying to keep an eye on to not let these guys get too comfortable. Players, coaches, staff, anybody in this building. Shane, for the uh, casual fan or observer who looks at Jason's performance on Saturday, they may say, wow, he made that look easy. He looked like a veteran SEC quarterback. Could you tell us about uh, how much work he had to put in to reach that point? Yeah. Um, a lot. I really did. I mean, he's just, uh, he's got a great, great work ethic and uh, he has had to put in a lot of work from, uh, you know, lose. We told him he needed to lose weight after spring practice. And, and I can't remember if I mentioned it to you guys the other night or not, but he had that one play where he scrambled out of the pocket and threw the ball downfield to Van. And I told him on the sidelines that, you know, thank God he had lost that weight because the Jason Brown at spring practice, that would have been a sack. Uh, cause the kid trying to tackle him was somebody that we recruited at Oklahoma. And I know what kind of athlete he is, uh, uh, for Florida, then just from a physical standpoint, working on things from a footwork, throwing the football, mental standpoint, understanding the offense and being able to operate it. And, and that was, uh, that was really good to see the other night, just his efficiency, being able to go out there and just operate the offense. Uh, he's gotten very comfortable, very confident in what he's doing and did a nice job, uh, Saturday night doing that. And, and it's because of the work he's, he he lives right near here. He can walk home at night if he needs to, and it seems like every every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, he's popping his head in my office around dinner time to say hello, and then popping his head in my office at you know nine nine thirty at night just to say hello. And he had watched practice, or he just got done watching the opponent's third down pressure tape, or whatever it might be. So he's prepared. Um, to be the starting quarterback ever since the Eastern Illinois game. And because of that, he kept getting better and better and better mentally and physically each week, and it showed on Saturday night. Shane, the Florida game going forward, how, how much has that already helped you as a tool you can use in recruiting and a sustainable teaching example within the building, you know, not just this week, but also going forward? Yeah, uh, from a teachable standpoint, absolutely, because we're able to point to – all the things that we did last week that allowed us to go play like we did. Uh, not just last week, but the week before in practice, the way that our guys practiced, the, the, the way we got better in practice, the way they prepared mentally. I mean, we, we, we played really well physically, but then going back, if you just look at the Florida game from a, a, an assignment standpoint, it was the best game we've had all year just from a mental standpoint, not making a lot of mental errors and mistakes. And it was because of the preparation that we put into the Florida game. And, and when you do all that work, it allows you to go out there on Saturday night and play like we did, but also to play with confidence and play freely and things like that as well. And then from a recruiting standpoint, um, it's, it's uh, been impactful already. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of prospects that were at the game on Saturday night, some that have been here for games before, some that was their first experience. 
Um, a lot of prospects that weren't at the game that I had text messages from right afterwards. And then, frankly, I'll be honest with you, it's a lot. Some guys that uh, early, I'd say in the summertime or early in the season, I, I couldn't get them to return a text or answer a phone call or whatever it might be. And, and now some of those guys are showing some more interest. So I think it's a great statement about uh, where we are right now, but where we're going. And, and if anything, it's just, I think a lot of these prospects from talking to them were just, they love the way that our young men played and the passion they played with and the, how hard they played and the love that was evident on that field and, and on the sideline for each other. Um, and then credit, you know, Justin King and our social media team and all they do as well that gets that message out there as well of what goes on in this program, not just out there on the field, but behind closed doors and in the locker room also. We, we, uh, uh, we've got a special group of people in this building and, and more and more people are, are seeing that um, week in, week out. Shane, earlier this morning, uh, Marshawn Lloyd mentioned that there was a player held meeting. Uh, I'm not sure if you were aware of that before today, but the uh, point being is, you know, we hear all the time in football, right? You know, these cliche things, especially with trying to change a program, right? Culture and um, what does that actually look like behind the scenes for people that don't know exactly what that is and have never been part of a football program? And what can this do leading forward, not just heading into this game, but just what you guys are trying to create big picture? Yeah, you know, the best teams I've been around, they have great leadership from within. Um, and we've really worked hard to develop the leadership on this team and, and guys that already are leaders of the team, guys that maybe weren't at the beginning of the season that we're trying to not necessarily make leaders, but increase their leadership ability and, and role. Um, you know, every every Sunday we have a team meeting, but before the team meeting here in this room, our, you know, group of leaders on this team, they come in here and meet. And sometimes I come in, but it's always Derek Moore and Connor Shaw and, and Luke Day and Chip Morton come in here with them. And and th those are really good meetings as well. And, and I was aware – of the meeting, some of the guys came to me and told me they wanted to wanted to have one, which I was all for. I didn't ask what they talked about. Uh, still don't know. Obviously, it was pretty good, so they probably <laughs> they may need to do it again uh, this week. But I think that's great. It just shows guys taking ownership, and 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 um, uh, it's cool when you hear the message that we as coaches or myself as the head coach talk about during the week and then you hear the players saying that back to each other you hear them talk about it in a press conference or whatever it may be so it's it's uh it's very impactful and and something that all great teams need in my opinion is, is the the leadership from within i mean there's only so much i can say and do when i stand in front of them and talk it needs to be them and when their peers say it and it's jj saying it or aaron sterling or 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 whoever, you know, when those guys are saying it to, to the other guys, Jabari Ellis, Nick Muse, I mean, you carry on joining on and on and on, it's, it has even more impact. Earlier this season, um, Luke and Zeb were saying how no matter who was starting, they were genuinely supporting each other, always helping each other both on and off the field. Have you seen similarities with Zeb and Jason through this process as well? Yeah, very much so. Zeb's been, uh, Zeb's been awesome to Jason. Uh, last week during the week, you know, they, those guys are up here at night on their own. They'll come in here on what's today, Tuesday nights. And I think they get pizza and they sit in the quarterback meeting room and they just watch tape together. And when Luke was the starter, they were all in there. When Zeb was the starter, they were all in there. Uh, Luke was getting, leaving to get surgery the very next morning. I think it was two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And He's in there late at night with them on Tuesday, and I think he, he was leaving at like 5 a.m. the next day to go get surgery. Luke Doty was. Uh, and then last week with Jason being the starter, those guys are in there. So they are all supportive of each other. And, and credit Zeb. I mean, he's a, he was a fantastic coach before he became a player again, and he'll be a great coach when he's done playing. But he was great with Jason. He was great with Jason last week, and he was great with Jason during the game as well because Zeb's on the headphone, so he hears everything that, that we are saying as coaches. So between series with Sat being in the box, you know, Zeb's on the field, and he's able to be like a player coach almost. I mean, coaching Jason up and helping him and talking to him and, and uh, uh, 
it was really cool to see the way those guys are supporting each other. And then back out on the practice field, you know, this morning, because it's a tough, it's not an easy situation for Zeb. Zeb goes from starter to not starter to back to starter to not starter, but he's such a pro and, and has handled it great and, and is a big part of the success in that quarterback meeting room. Shane, I'm curious if you've had the distinct pleasure of meeting Little Chomp yet. <laughs> I uh, have not. I saw Little Chomp on the uh, on the video, but I haven't actually had a chance to see Little Chomp in person. No. <laughs> uh, and I guess on a serious note, I, I know every coach's philosophy is a little different as it pertains to this, but do you talk to the guys about the possibility of winning another game and getting to a bowl game? Like, or is that something that you just kind of just don't address until it happens? Yeah, we, um, we addressed it this morning in the team meeting just because it'd be naive for me to think they're not talking about it. Um, cause I'm sure they're hearing it on the outside and, and they know, but we addressed it briefly this morning that every time you think about getting bowl eligible, stop. And just think about at that moment what you got to do to prepare to play your very best against Missouri, because uh, we don't want to be thinking about, you know, it's the whole process and result thing. Let's not think about what the the result on Saturday. It's the process during the week to prepare ourselves to go play great on Saturday. Uh, but I I did address it, you know, briefly this morning as well, and uh, and said, look. We're not going to talk about that. Let's all year. We're not talking about Florida. We're not talking about getting bowl eligible. It's being our very best to go compete against Missouri because we expect to fully get their best shot this weekend. I mean, they're sitting there four and five, and they're fighting their rear ends off to to find two wins at least down the stretch as well. And and we're the next opponent for them. And you can see them getting better as the year goes. So they have our full attention, and we better be ready to play. Uh, at a high, high level on Saturday uh, against them because we fully expect them to be at the, the highest level they've been all season. Hey, Shane, Corey took my question, so I'm going to ask something I didn't get a chance to ask you after the game Saturday. On that fourth and one conversion in the third quarter that set up the Jaheim touchdown, Yeah. notice on the sideline you yelling at your offensive line, move them, and then after they converted, it looked like you were more animated after that play than any of the touchdowns or anything else that game. I wanted to ask about just that one play and what it meant to you to see your offensive line need to get that one yard, get physical man up, and move Florida's defensive line to get that yard. It's awesome. I mean, I'm, um, um, I'm, I don't know if old school's the word, but I'd love to be able to line up and put a offensive lineman at fullback and, and run the power play 70 plays a game. I mean, that would be awesome, in my opinion. Um, so to be able to – because I think Trey Jones was in there on that play. I believe he was in there on that fourth down play. So to be able to put him out there, we had already done that early in the season, earlier in the game. So if, I believe I'm right in saying that. So Florida probably had a pretty good idea that's what was coming. It's fourth and one. We're going to run the football, and it's just here's what we're going to run. You know we're running it. Here we come, downhill right at you. Stop it. And being able to move guys on the line of scrimmage, uh, was pretty awesome, and, and just uh, that mentality. We want to be extremely physical every single game, so that mentality of just being able to line up with an old school two tight ends and a fullback set and run the old school power play is pretty awesome. And being able to move people and and get that first down when they know what you're doing is is a good feeling. And, and it's good to see because the offensive line, they played great the other night, some technique things they need to clean up. When they're, you know, there's a lot they can be better at as well. But just to see the energy and the spirit they were playing with was awesome. And then I would go later in the game, too, when it's fourth and one and Florida goes for it. And we know that on fourth down, they, you know, they like to run the quarterback. They like to run the quarterback, period. And for them to be able to line up and on fourth and one and run the ball and us to stop them also. I mean, those are two huge plays just from a competitive standpoint, from a mentality standpoint. Uh, so that meant. That meant um, a lot. I was animated, so try not to read lips or anything on that play either. <laughs> I think my mom would be upset at me. Shane, I know you don't like talking about uniforms, but is the hat officially going to make a reappearance this week? Yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> I don't think I have any choice, even yeah. if I didn't want to. So yeah. I've, I'm have i not that I'm superstitious, but I think I went the whole season my first year at Oklahoma wearing the hat, and I didn't wear the hat the whole season. And uh, certainly we'll, con we'll continue on with the hat, yeah. I think.
you obviously mentioned Beatty and, and being able to stop the run. How this defense has struggled at times. Stopping the run this year was really good against Florida. Did you guys do anything different schematically, or was it just guys filling gaps the right way? You're talking about against Florida? Yeah. I think uh, guys, just a couple of different things. I mean, we I don't want to say we committed more people to the run because we didn't call many different defenses than we had all year. Uh, you know, we tried to certainly involve, you know, maybe our defensive backs being a little bit more snug to the line of scrimmage to stop the run. But I think really the biggest thing, Colin, is just the guys just refusing to be blocked and just winning one-on-one -on -one battles. And, you know, our defensive line and edge guys, they played great up front. They got off blocks. And then credit our defensive backs for the way they tackled as well. I mean, you saw Cam Smith, Marcel Cam Smith making some tackles, coming off blocks. Uh, Marcellus Dial made two a great play on Florida's first drive uh, over on the sideline. So we tackled well. Um, and then really just got down to com competition wise, just getting off blocks and refusing to refusing to stay blocked. Shane, we obviously saw, I think we saw a couple sets where you had like two, three tight ends in. I, I mean, I know that's a pretty diverse group in terms of what they can do, but between you know Kenya and Muse, Jaheim, like I mean, how do you feel like those guys have complemented each other? How do you feel? Like feel like they might fit into the offense going forward the next few weeks and how do you feel like their roles have maybe adjusted if at all you know the last whatever week two weeks three weeks yeah they've all done a good job I mean Nick and um, Nick and Jaheim have kind of been the two guys all season but credit Kenyon I mean he's really gotten better and he's playing with confidence he made a nice catch out there the other night he's doing a nice job blocking and uh, all those guys have worked really hard to improve their blocking uh, in the run game for sure and in pass protection when we ask them to and then they're all guys that we can do different things with in the passing game as well. I mean, I guess what all three caught at least one ball the other night as well. And we want to be able to continue to uh, – that's the great things about tight ends is – or one of the great things is, you know, we may be in a two tight end set where we're running the power play like we were on those fourth downs, or we may be in a situation where they're out wide as receivers. And it takes a unique guy that – can put his hand in the in the ground and block defensive ends in the SEC in the run game, but then the very next play go out in space and get open against a defensive back. And all three of those guys have that skill set, and, and they've got to continue to come along. We've got to continue to, you know, find ways to use them. And the more that we're able to run the ball, um, the more the more uh, that opens things up in the passing game. I mean, the little pop pass to Nick Muse was off the counter play that we have been running all night long. And, and now here comes Nick to block the counter, but now we you know slip him out and, on the, and just a little pop pass. So the more efficient you can run the football, the more it opens up things for those tight ends in the passing game and then everybody on offense. Shane, I know we probably people in the media, we've, we've probably – Given this to fans because they, you know, they're curious and everything right now from a COVID year, whatever you want to call it. Can you kind of explain what that kind of looks like? Because obviously, like a guy like Jason Brown, he does have the option to be able to return. I'm not going to go down the list as this guy come back, but how does that kind of work in terms of dealing with that once the season ends in comparison to the years past? Yeah, it's certainly a, a challenge. The COVID year, meaning that basically 2020 didn't exist. Uh, from an eligibility standpoint, it's probably the simplest way to put it. That you know, if you were a junior in 2020, you're a junior in 2021. If you were a senior in 2020, you're a senior in 2021. <clears throat> um, so it 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 uh, it makes it. I don't know if challenging is the word, but you've got to be great from of balancing your scholarship numbers and and having an idea of who uh, has been here for you know, five years or whatever at this point, but still wants to come back, you know, for a six year. And and we've got, you know, senior day and last home game coming up and all that stuff where seniors are honored and trying to figure out who who sees themselves as a senior and who sees themselves as a junior and working through all that. So it certainly makes it uh, challenging. And those are all things that, you know, we're just kind of work trying to work through as we go. But the biggest thing from our standpoint is just the the balancing of the roster because you can only have 85 guys on scholarship and – you know those guys that as we go forward i mean you got to you got to balance those numbers and make sure that you know you don't have uh more freshmen coming into your program and and not enough uh, not enough people that are transitioning out of the program from a number standpoint Shane schematics aside uh did did sats play calling just feel different on saturday night and just how would you 
just kind of describe how he was able to, um, you know, just kind of piece that game together uh, play by play? Yeah, I think it when you're able to run the ball and you're able to stay on the field, it certainly feels different and and, um, and looks better without a doubt when you're moving the ball forward and you're not having a bunch of second and 11s and second and 12s and third and longs. It certainly is easier. We talk all the time about staying on schedule that first and 10, let's get it to second and six, not second and 11. So we were able to stay on schedule. And then I thought sat and the offensive staff just did a really nice job of, of uh, really like we do all opponents, but really breaking Florida down, understanding when we lined up in these certain formations and they lined up this way, what we're most likely going to get defensively, coverage-wise, pressure-wise, whatever it may be, and then having, you know, plays to attack that. And Jason had great confidence in the plan, and, and it all just, you know, it all just uh, uh, flowed together for sure. But a lot of that is done, obviously, during the week, the preparation leading up to the opponent where you get out there on Saturday and um, things were certainly, you know, clicking from the – flea flicker on the first game, first play to, you know, whatever else. Things just uh, – things flowed very easily for sure.